Hello everybody and welcome to my first awards watch review of 2021. So what are these reviews? Well, as more and more movies start coming out that are on the awards show radar, I wanted to talk about as many of them as I could and I wouldn't be able to do each and every one of them individually, It'd just be too many videos. So I'm gonna start sort of clustering them together in these reviews. Sometimes I'm going to be going back to movies that came out already this year, such as Annette and Coda and several others, but I wanted to start this series with three movies that were made available to most people just this past weekend, King Richard, Come On, Come On, and Tick, Tick, Boom. Before we get into that, though, I want to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. The wireless earbuds that should be at the top of your holiday shopping list. Go to buyraycon.com slash Merle, M-U-R-R-E-L-L, today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off your Raycon order. And stay tuned after this review to learn even more. And let's start with King Richard, which opened in theaters and is also available on HBO Max. This movie is from director Rinaldo Marcus Green, who also did the film Monsters and Men, amongst others, and writer Zach Balin in his first produced screenplay. This is the story of the early rise of Venus and Serena Williams and stars Will Smith as their father, Richard Williams. Sonia Sidney and Demi Singleton play Venus and Serena in the film. Anjanu Ellis also stars as Oracine Williams, the girl's mother and Richard's wife, who lives a life of quiet frustration as she tries to hold the family together. There are also supporting performances from Tony Goldwyn and John Bernthal as the Williams sisters' two coaches. As happens on so many other real-life stories, there have already been accusations that the rough edges have been sanded off of Richard Williams, who has been a polarizing figure in sports, particularly when Venus and Serena were very young. But this movie is not a glamour portrait. Anjanu Ellis actually has a wonderful scene in this movie as everything finally boils over and she confronts her husband about not just what he is, but what he's done to this family. She's really able to cut him down and say these things that have been simmering inside for all these years. It's a really beautiful piece of acting in a movie that has a lot of great pieces of acting across the board from every cast member. In the first half of the film, Venus and Serena are sort of pushed to the background, but as Venus's star grows, the girls begin to take more focus. Although I do think that Serena sort of gets short shrift in this movie, which parallels to some of the tension that was happening in the family. Still narrow Narratively, I feel like her achievements are mainly confined to a very short epilogue in the film, when it might have been more interesting for this movie to delve a little more deeply into her as a character. As Venus Williams, Sonia Sidney wears the burden that her father has placed on her, the idea that you are destined to be the family's breadwinner, for lack of a better word. And for much of the film, she hides this burden behind a smile. Venus is always confident, happy, ready to do what needs to be done. But as she gets older and as her debut gets Gets closer and closer, we start to see this facade break a little bit, and two of the best scenes in the movie are between Venus and her father Richard as they learn to talk to each other, not just as father and daughter or coach and athlete, but as equals. One of the surprises in this movie, actually, for me, was John Bernthal as the girls' tennis coach Rick Macy, who, against type, actually gets a lot of the comedy in this film. It may not be what you think of first when you think of John Bernthal. And you really do get a great picture of the frustration, not just for the Williams family of what Richard's doing, but of everyone around them. Because he has a method, he has a plan, as he keeps telling everybody. But nobody can really get a track on whether this is going to cause the rise of his daughter's careers or the destruction of them. This is not only a great sports movie, one of the very few pure sports movies that are focused on tennis, but it adds an additional layer because it explores the difficulties that the Williams family faced as a black family breaking into a largely white world. At this point in time, there had been Arthur Ashe, there had been Althea Gibson, they had blazed trails, but that was decades before, and there are several scenes where you see the racism both on and under the surface that the Williams family had to face as Richard Williams deals with sports agents who go over the top to lavish praise on their family's incredible story and overcoming the odds. And as Richard Williams, Will Smith is able to cut these people down to their core because he recognizes that his family is not just a success story because of their color or because of where they come from, but because of what he knows that his daughters are capable of. Looking at the movie's overall chances on the awards circuit, Will Smith is 
fantastic in this movie. I think this is easily his best performance since 2006's The Pursuit of Happiness, and I hope the fact that this is a hybrid theatrical release doesn't keep him out of contention for the best actor race, because I think he should be in the mix as much as anybody else. I also believe that Anjanu Ellis should be in the discussion, whether they decide to submit her for best actress or best supporting actress. I also think that King Richard could be looking at a best picture nomination, potentially. You could see a writing nomination. This movie, I think is in line for serious contention in several categories at the Academy Awards and all of the other major award shows. I thought that it was a really great film. The performances are very strong. And again, it works as a drama. It has comedic moments. The sports stuff works. The matches have tension. If you don't know the outcomes of a lot of these matches, particularly in v early in Venus Williams's career, not really a lot to pick apart in King Richard. Like I said, I wish that they had gone a little bit deeper into the story of Serena, but that also does sort of work with what they're working with in the movie so I see why they did it but that's the only somewhat major flaw and it's not really that big of a flaw in this film it's a big recommendation for me and again if you're following the award circuit I think this is going to be a must see on your list Let's move on to a movie that entered limited theatrical release this past weekend, and that is a movie called Come On, Come On, which is from writer-director Mike Mills. He is an Academy Award nominee for his screenplay for 20th Century Women. Christopher Plummer also won an Academy Award for acting in his film Beginners. In Come On, Come On, Joaquin Phoenix stars as Johnny, a producer who agrees to watch his young nephew Jesse, who was played in a standout breakthrough performance by a young actor named Woody Norman, while Johnny's sister Viv, who's played by Gabby Hoffman, helps her ex-husband deal with a mental crisis. Joaquin Phoenix is a master of the understated performance. His role in Joker was sensational, but it was also one of the showier performances of his career. And this role of Johnny really shows what he's capable of on the smaller side of the acting scale because we don't really need a full download on what's happening in Johnny's life or what his backstory is because you can tell just from the way that Joaquin Phoenix looks from a sigh, from his posture, from the tiniest reaction to what somebody says on his face, you understand understand what's going on here. So as the movie goes on and you begin to learn a little bit more about what Johnny's going through, you feel like you're already sort of caught up because we have a great actor who's able to communicate that and a writer-director in Mike Mills who trusts the audience to know what's going on. Come On, Come On is also a starkly beautiful film. It's in black and white. The cinematography is from Robbie Ryan. He was Oscar nominated for the movie The Favorite. He also was the DP on Marriage Story, amongst many, many others. And he shoots in a beautiful black and white that isn't just an artistic gimmick. The simplicity of the film's color palette, I think, only enhances the intimacy that grows between these family members. And it almost keeps you focused on the real story. Come On, Come On also for me is a great example of movies being great in part because of what you bring to it because I saw a lot of myself in this story. Much like Jesse, I had a single mother. Gabby Hoffman is a single mother in this movie. And much like Jesse, I also had a very close relationship to my uncle. And so I saw a lot of parallels to my own life in this movie and I found it to be especially touching because I understand how meaningful this exact relationship can be and I appreciate the authenticity of rooting Johnny and Jesse's relationship not in conflict but in love. Of course there is some conflict and that's because Mike Mills is also really able to capture on the page the fear of being a child and the idea that you have to fight to be heard that adults are constantly having conversations that you can't hear and that stealing just a moment of independence can get you in serious trouble. All of this is communicated beautifully, both in Mike Mills' script and direction, and also in Woody Norman's performance. As a matter of fact, I think Woody Norman gives one of the best supporting performances of the year. In a just world, I think that he would be mentioned in the same conversation as his adult peers in the acting world, but I unfortunately don't know if that's going to happen. Also really strong in this movie is Gabby Hoffman. Uh, she similarly is empathetic and allowed to show anger and frustration, but in a way that doesn't reduce her complicated sibling relationship with Johnny to the cliche of just being the feuding siblings. Watching Come On, Come On is like being granted a two-hour look into the private lives of a family that feels like they existed before the movie started and feels like they're going to exist after the credits roll. And that's not easy to do, to make a movie that's entertaining, that has a great story, but that also feels so authentic and so real, to make you care about these characters, not just as characters, but as people. And that's what this movie does so well. 
I don't know where it's going to stand in the Oscar race as we look at the awards competition. I guess uh, Joaquin Phoenix would be a big push for Best Actor. I think that Gabby Hoffman would be a push for Best Supporting Actress. I think it's probably most likely to pick something up in the screenplay category. That's where Mike Mills has picked up nominations before. If the Academy really is able to latch onto this movie, I could see it as an outside shot uh, for Best Picture, especially because they have expanded the number of nominees. But it's more likely that you're going to see Come on, come on at a lot of the other ceremonies, the Independent Spirit Awards type shows. And that's also where I'm hoping that Woody Norman is able to get a little bit more traction and break into the acting categories because he really, again, does deserve to be up there with everyone else. But this is really an impeccably acted, beautiful, sweet, small movie about a boy and his uncle and this family that's trying to stay together. As I mentioned, Come on, come on is in limited release this weekend. You can check and see if it's going to come uh, to a theater near you in the coming weeks. But also, because of the abbreviated release schedule, it probably is not going to be that long until it's able on premium video on demand or to rent digitally. Uh, I would also recommend watching it that way because uh, it really, really is just a sweet movie. Finally, I want to talk about a movie that was released on Netflix this past Friday, and that is Tick, Tick, Boom, which is an adaptation of Jonathan Larson's 2001 Broadway musical, which debuted several years after his death. Larson, of course, best known for his musical Rent, which he sadly did not live to see the success of. This is the feature filmmaking debut of Lin-Manuel Miranda after his own musical In the Heights was adapted by John M. Chu and released earlier this year. Andrew Garfield, who's having one hell of a year, plays Larson as the story unfolds both with his performance of an early version of Tick, Tick, Boom and as we experience the events in his life that inspired the musical. It's also set in the late 80s and early 90s, so it not only captures Larson's desperation at trying to be discovered and write this masterpiece, but also the devastating effects of the AIDS epidemic and how it affects the community and Larson's outlook on life. We all know that Andrew Garfield is a really, really good actor who has been overlooked, especially on the awards side, since his breakthrough debut in The Social Network over a decade ago. But he's not just good in this movie. He is great. I really hope that he is not overlooked by the Academy again because he is brilliant in Tick, Tick, Boom, musically and emotionally as Larson counts down the days to his 30th birthday and sees his dreams slipping away. And Andrew Garfield is able to infect his performance with so much joy, desperation, anger, heartbreak, confidence, worry, hope. If it was just acting, it would be a career performance. Add on top of that the fact that he is doing his own singing in this movie, uh, which is not an easy thing to do. It really is the best performance I have seen from Andrew Garfield, and he's put in some pretty strong performances in the past. The movie's supporting cast includes Alexandra Shipp, Vanessa Hudgens, Bradley Whitford, and Judith Light. But the discovery for me here was Robin De Jesus, who is probably better known as a stage actor. He plays Jonathan's best friend, Michael, who's trying to keep his friend from floating away while dealing with his own issues and tragedy. It is a quiet performance that culminates in a heartbreaking realization for Jonathan at just what the cost of the dedication that he has to his art and his craft have been. And... There are always dark horse candidates that come in. I really hope that Robin De Jesus is one of those. He may not be on a lot of people's radar now, but there's plenty of time before Oscar nominations have to go in. If Andrew Garfield wasn't so great in this movie, Robin De Jesus would be the standout performance. However, that doesn't diminish the fact that he is also really great in this film. I worry that this being a Netflix film puts it at a little bit of a disadvantage as more and more movies from streamers start becoming eligible for Academy Awards. But I really, I have to think that Garfield is so great in this movie that he will not be uh, able to be ignored in the Best Actor race. It will certainly be a crime if he is. Of course, Delroy Lindo was in a similar situation last year with The Five Bloods, a Netflix film. He was not nominated. That movie, however, came out in the summer. This movie is coming out right in the heart of awards season. So hopefully enough people will see this performance and have it stick in their brains that Garfield is able to make the cut. I don't know if at the Academy Awards it's going to have a whole lot beyond that, perhaps some in the sound categories because of the music and everything, which is really well executed in this film. Lin-Manuel Miranda really does direct with a lot of confidence here, and you have a mix of the staginess of a Broadway musical with some really intimate filmmaking. I think that is a great combination of both. Uh, a very promising debut from him as a director, 
and widening our scope from outside the Academy Awards, I think for organizations that give awards specifically for musicals, we'll see what happens with West Side Story. It may come in and just blow everything off the stage, but I think that Tick, Tick, Boom is going to be a threat to win in any of those categories, even if West Side Story is really good because this movie is really good too. So if you have Netflix, especially if you like musicals, then that's a big recommendation for me. But I think even if you're not the biggest musical fan, it's not quite as... um uh, fanciful. Uh, there's a little bit more logic to how the music is integrated into the movie. So even if you're not a big musical fan, I'd say give this one a shot because it's it's a little bit different than the typical film. And again, Andrew Garfield, just fantastic in this movie. So those are my reviews for three awards contenders across a variety of categories. I will be back as we build up to awards season with a lot more of these films as they come out. And like I said, there's some that have already come out like Spencer and Coda and Annette that I'm going to loop back to and give you my thoughts on. And as always, stay tuned because I will keep breaking down my predictions and thoughts on Academy Awards season as we get close to the nominations early next year. And as all the other guilds and critics associations start giving out their awards as the year comes to and hard to believe that 2021 is coming to a close already. Also, before we go today, I want to talk about our sponsor, Raycon. It's the beginning of holiday shopping season. And if you're like me, you're always looking for something to put on your gift list for friends, family, and loved ones. Luckily, with Raycon, there's a great gift that you can buy at an affordable price that they will use every day. Raycon wireless earbuds feature seamless Bluetooth pairing and a comfortable noise-isolating fit, which means you can start listening right away and keep listening for hours. Raycon offers eight hours hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. The audio quality is also top notch, comparable to what you get from other premium brands. The difference is that Raycon starts at half the price. There's also a built in microphone so that you can take calls at the push of a button. Raycon earbuds are a great choice for that somebody on your gift list, or you know what? Pick up a pair for yourself because no matter who you buy them for, you're going to use them every day. And for our viewers, we have a special deal. You can go to buy Raycon. That's B U Y. R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash Merle, M-U-R-R-E-L-L, today to unlock exclusive details up to 20% off your Raycon order. But this offer is only available for a limited time, and you don't want to miss it. That's buyraycon.com slash Merle to unlock up to 20% off your Raycons, buyraycon.com slash Merle. Thanks so much for watching. I will be back very soon. As a matter of fact, I'll be back tomorrow with a look at the weekend box office. There will also be reviews for House of Gucci coming up this week. That's a movie I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Lots of great stuff as we get into the holiday movie season. Hard to believe. Thanks so much. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.